Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to put up a quick review for the Body Track Glider. This is a rowing machine sold by Amazon. I have to admit, when I saw this machine on Amazon, I was a bit skeptical, given that it is uh, quite reasonably priced. Uh, it also is quite light, um, and there's not very much to the hardware. I mean, it's all of like 40 pounds, I think, all told. Um, I assembled it without having to reference the book at all. It, it all made sense when you just look at the components. Uh, so really quick, I just wanted to cover a lot of the things that you'll see here. First, I'm going to give you a run through. Uh, so here we go. Let me swap my screen so I can see what I'm telling you better. So now, this is the front of the unit here. It's got a readout gauge. The readout gauge tells you different stats as you use it. It's automatic. Um, things like the counts, so the number of rows, the times uh, that you've been on the machine. Um, pretty simple stuff. There's no um, you know, heart sensor and stuff like that. It just gives general readouts. Um, there are also uh, foot pedals. These are on a pivot design. All this is not, a, you have to put this together, of course. Uh, the rowing arms, of course, there's two of them. The rowing arms do fold underneath the unit for storage purposes. Basically, there are two uh, kind of knobs on the back that you install that you remove, and then you can fold these underneath the device so you can fold it up and put it in a closet or something. As you can easily tell as I pan across the device, it doesn't take up very much foot real estate as it is. Um, the seat, which of course goes along a rolling uh, tread, it's pretty, it's not, there's not much resistance on the seat at all. It goes pretty much by itself. There's a slight incline downward. Underneath the device, I'm going to tip this over just a little bit. You have a regular pneumatic shock. You can't see because of my arm, but there's a regular pneumatic shock back here. Shock has a resistance uh, knob on it, so you can add some resistance if you want to uh, add some intensity to your workout make it a little bit more difficult. Um, it goes from 1 to 12. What I usually find is that 7 is about reasonable. Anything lower than that, you there's still resistance, but you know, unless if you're not that muscular to begin with, I find one to be absolutely insufficient, two to be absolutely sufficient, and so on. Seven starts to where it gets to where you'll get an actual workout. I want to just stress that due to the build of the machine, because the fact the seat has no resistance and you can't give it any resistance, don't expect to get very much exercise on the legs. You're not going to really feel very much burn on your legs. It's all going to really be on your upper body. Um, most notably, um, pecs, um, try a little bit, not very much, um, just the top side of your abs, you will feel some burn there, the shoulders, you're definitely going to feel some burn, um, this is really good if you want to mix it with a dumbbell workout, because if you do this type of a rowing action to warm up and get stretched out and get limber, you can then transition to dumbbells pretty easy, I've found. So what I'm going to do is just kind of show you. A lot of people were kind of curious about the rowing motion. I'm going to do a quick row motion just to show you the uh, motion of the machine and how it goes. And, um, and then I'll tie it all up. So here we go. I apologize you won't see too much of me, but I wanted to focus on what was important, which is the myself strapping in as well as the rowing motion itself. So... You grab both rows, you bring it back, outward, and then forward, and so on. But as you can see, the seat moves so easy, I'm not really getting too much of leg, leg exercise. I mean, you are moving and your legs are, you know, contracting and stretching, but you're not really getting much of a workout on it because of the lack of resistance. And then, of course, the screen comes on automatically so you don't have to turn it on to tell you stats about what's going on. What I like to pay attention to is the number of revolutions that I've done on the machine. That's a good gauge of just how much resistance I've done. I don't burn very many calories on this. Um, 
for calorie burning, you really need to get into like a running workout. This type of machine is really good for working upper body. And then as you see, the seat just gently rides to the very beginning. So, as I said, no resistance whatsoever. Anyway, there you have it. Body Track Glider on Amazon. It is very reasonably priced. There's not much to the build. It's quite skeleton, actually, but it does do a very good upper body workout. If you do it for, I'd say, 15 to 30 minutes per day, you will feel the burn. Um, it will have you worked out. I, I would liken something like this to, um, you know, kind of the a better version of free weights in that because it works your entire upper body and doesn't just focus on your arms or your, you know, your chest or your shoulders, it means that you can get a more defined, more definition. So if that's important to you, you want to consider this type of machine. I wouldn't consider it for true weight loss because it doesn't burn as much calories as you'd probably need to to overcome the calories that you intake. Best way to lose weight would be a treadmill, better diet, you know, and that, those types of things. But something like this, you can get definition out of it. You can get tone out of it. If you have atrophied muscles because you haven't worked out since high school gym, this is probably a good place to start.